how did you feel like when you went back and did your whole comprehensive review of the group that you felt like your offensive line did this year? Uh, I, I thought we really kind of hit our stride kind of halfway through and towards the end of the season um, until the injury bugs started getting us again a little bit. But uh, I'm really pleased with the progress that those guys did throughout the year, especially the new guys, what they brought to the room was tremendous. Um, so we just got to keep building on that. Really excited about it. One thing that Duke Tobin said is that you can never have enough offensive linemen in the NFL and college and right. any league. You know, how much do you kind of attest to that, just being an O-line coach? Right, there's no question. You can never have enough guys in the room. Um, I've, I've had coaches uh, that I've worked with in the past talk about horror stories being down to their seventh center in training camp. Uh, that's a nightmare no one wants to ever experience, but uh, you, you can never have enough. It's, it's one of the hardest positions to develop, so you always got to have guys in the pipeline to develop. Um, I'd say probably DBs, corners, I hear that a lot about, and quarterbacks. Those are the kind of the guys that you take a little time, you'd have in the pipeline, you can never have enough. So. Has Jackson established himself as a guy that can start for you at, you know, can he be in the mix at left tackle? Well, he, he certainly did some good things those last few games that he played. I'd, I'd say he's certainly in the mix to compete, really excited about his progress and what he did last year, especially some of the adversity he experienced early in his career really showed kind of the, the mental toughness that, that he's got and uh, really excited about him moving forward. How can you guys be more consistent in the run game, Frank? In the run game? Yeah. Uh, I, I would say we're, we're pretty consistent, actually. I think we're really ranked high as far as efficiency, which talks about the consistency. Uh, if you're asking for areas of improvement, we need to be more explosive in the run game. Um, that will help us out. But I, I think we're probably pretty tops in the league as far as consistency goes and as far as efficiency. Uh, but we're always looking to get better. Nowhere, nowhere way is that something that we're satisfied with. But, Do you uh, think that improved drastically when you kind of switched to a gap scheme midway through the I, I think year? it definitely helped. I think it definitely helped. It allowed uh, our quarterback to kind of run the whole show from soup to nuts and allowed us from an offense to kind of attack the defense a little bit more on their heels, maybe not tip and tell some of the things that we were doing. Uh, I thought it fit maybe our group as a whole, maybe a little bit more comfortable what they've done in the past. Not that we could not do – some of the wide zone stuff that we're doing early, those guys can do that. But uh, their comfort level, especially early on, was maybe a little bit more lean towards some of the things we, we progressed to. How realistic is drafting a tackle, even in the first round where you guys are at, that could come in and play right away? Just because that position's so hard. I mean, is that yeah. really asking a lot of anybody you know, to come in and play right away at that position? Uh, I think it is. I think it's hard to do no matter where you pick in the draft, especially at the back end of the draft. I think it's – yeah, so those kind of guys are going to go in the top five picks, top ten if you're lucky. Um, I've worked with some of those types of guys, and even then, it's they're they're coming in having to, you know, develop on something in their toolbox, if you will. So it's not that it can't be done. I mean, there's never said nothing can can't be done. You can find a starter on the third day of the draft. It just depends on who that guy is, what's he what's he made up of, and and then uh, you know, it's just, the, the draft's interesting. So we're we're obviously looking the find those guys at every pick so obviously well there's a question mark there with his injury but how how comfortable do you feel with the other four spots and the guys at those spots uh what can you phrase that yeah how comfortable do you feel with jonah at left tackle right. cordell at, at left guard obviously Karras at center and then kappa at right guard like right. your starters how comfortable do you feel with those four comfortable with all those guys uh comfortable with lc when he's healthy sure. at the right tackle spot yeah. so um very comfortable with those guys. They, they improved throughout the course of the year. They really grew in what we were trying to do offensively and got a really good experience or understanding what those guys can and cannot do. So especially with the new guys, um, feel real comfortable with them. Was it a surprise to you how long it took LC to get into his rhythm? I, I guess, was it a surprise to you how long it took him to be able to practice after missing most of training camp? Yeah. Not really, because uh, he missed all the training camp and he was trying to overcome uh, a little bit of an injury there coming into the year. Uh, I think I say to this at the time, it's very hard to get your, what I call your season legs. You kind of go through camp legs early, going through training camp, and he didn't experience that. He experienced that through the regular season. And it's not the same workload, so he's kind of get through that through games. The speed of the games are a little bit different regular season versus preseason. So uh, I wasn't too surprised. Um, he came out of that and, and, and became the player that we had hoped he would be. Uh, just unfortunate kind of that New England game. Frank, back to the tackles. I mean, again, depending on LC's health, 
Are you wedded to Jonah being a left tackle? Could you flop him the right because Jackson right. maybe showed you something at left, or is it just too fluid at the moment? <laughs> I, I laugh because uh, I've been in this league long enough to say we're not wedded to anything. Tomorrow everything could change, and who knows where everyone's going to be. So, so that's just the nature of the league. So everyone understands that. That's The league's ultra competitive. Every team is here this week to try to get better at every spot they can possibly get better at. And that's why this league is so great. And that's why it's impressive that when players play in this league because it's extremely competitive. Now you don't have a game today, but is it fair to call Jonah the, the starting left tackle if well, you were playing hurt. a game? But if he's healthy, he is, yeah. But he's hurt. If, if, if LC isn't ready for the opener, probably right. a pretty good chance because he's hurt late. Right. If he's not ready for the opener, could Jackson be a right tackle? Yeah. He could be the right tackle, absolutely. He's, he's in the mix. He's definitely in the mix. We Hopefully, LC can make it back in time, and who knows how the offseason plays out, but we've got to prepare and have a guy ready. So, and Jackson's a guy in the mix. The AFC Championship game, I don't know if you got asked this earlier, but what was maybe the most frustrating thing about maybe the way that game kind of transpired in the trenches for y'all, if there was any? Uh... I don't know. I mean, just the game overall, just losing the game. It was a close game. It was a close battle. Just losing the game. I, nothing really jumps out at me at one thing to say. I mean, sure, there's a handful of plays where I wish we had done better as a group or as an individual on certain plays. I mean, I can't give you any very specifics. I mean, we lost the game. I mean, that's that's what's frustrating. We got close, but not but not to get where we wanted to get to. So it's, that's really the ultimate frustration. I assume. Do you see any commonalities maybe between the the pressures allowed in the AFC title game in the Super Bowl, or those two completely different things? Were there maybe some things that were kind of similar in your mind? No. I don't see anything except there were some pressures in the Super Bowl and some pressures in the AFC Championship game. I mean, just from that regards. But as far as maybe where some of the breakdown occurred, I would say there were some different. They weren't the same as far as how or where or who. Or, I would say there were some different. How comfortable, did Hakeem, how comfortable did Hakeem Adeniji look at right tackle, and what do you think the future is for him going into? Yeah, he, he showed a lot of good things uh, at right tackle. He looked comfortable some weeks, and some some spots in games he didn't look very comfortable. So he, he's a young player that's still trying to find his groove and develop. Still excited about him. Still like the way he works every day. Uh, but uh, a lot of things to be excited about, and a lot of things like everyone else that he needs to improve on. One thing that uh, Brian Callahan mentioned. Frank, it was the play of Alex Kappa throughout the season, right. especially the job he did on Chris Jones and right. the game in Cincinnati. Right. And then you could tell there was a difference um, in the game, in, in the championship game. What right. made Alex Kappa so consistent throughout the year? Um, he's got an uncanny ability to know where to help in pass pro. Um, he's excellent one-on-one -on -one in pass pro, but he, he knows where to, where to help, where, to, where his eyes need to be the depth of the pocket as far as his relationship with the center and the tackle where he needs to help. Uh, he understands stunts very well, uh, dogs or pressures that are associated with that, where he needs to be to help. He's excellent with his eyes. Um, he's just a talented player. I thought he was playing at a Pro Bowl level when he was when he was healthy and playing. So that was obviously a, a, a guy we missed. Everyone would miss a guy at that level. So, uh, But he was doing really well. He's a talented guy. He's a smart guy. He's got great awareness. He understands the complexity of not only the scheme, but what we're attacking as far as on the defense and what they're doing and where some of the issues might show up and the adjustments that's coming around the corner and getting some other guys on the same page. How close was he to getting back? He was going to be back if we made it to the final game. He was, he was going to be back. He might have been a little bit uh, limited that week in practice, but he, he was, he was going to be out there. Jonah? Yeah, I think he was going to go out there and try to give it a go. That was a little bit more questionable, but that's something probably best to ask the, the trainers. Yeah. But I, I know Kappa was – he was hell-bent. He was, he was going. <laughs> so, Understanding that all guys are different and they can improve at any point in their career, but how far into a guy's career typically do you get before you have a really good grasp of who they are, what their ceiling could be? Uh, it, each guy's different. I wouldn't say there's a hard and true fast number of years. Each guy's different. Um, usually it's applicable to where they're picked in the draft. I mean, obviously guys who are picked higher in the draft are a little further along as far as their playing 
skill sets involved, it may maybe a little less development. Uh, I guess it's just the variety, each guy's different. What are you expecting to see from Cordell Volson in year two? Someone a lot more comfortable with what uh, he's being asked to do out there from a scheme-wise and technique-wise, who can just maybe pin his ears back and play a little faster, a little quicker, because he's got confidence in knowing what he's trying to do out there from an assignment and technique standpoint. Um, really excited about Cordell. He was a joy to coach. A tough, physical, smart player. It's what you want, line one. He's made up all the right stuff. Um, he's got all the tools, and he, he is determined to, to be the best. He's a lot of fun to be around. What is the next step for glass eaters? What do you, where, where do glass you got a suggestion? I mean, what do you mean? <laughs> You're the man right there. You're the man. That was a good what do you What do you, like, you want me to give you another another line or something? I'm all yeah, out of those. I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the first one was so, yeah, the first one was yeah. so good. I, uh, you know. You seem to keep adding those kind of guys. I mean, yeah. this this is an eat them up, chew you up kind of business, and you got to be tough as nails. And, and it's not physically tough. It's mentally tough. It's just, I mean, it's just the nature of the beast, man. It's. It's not for the faint of heart. So we're looking for guys who can handle that, and guys who are going to stand up to the test and, and push through the, the ebbs and flows. The seasons, I mean, if you look back at our season last year, I mean, everyone was, was like, oh, my God, panicking in the first two weeks. You know, you can't do that. It's a long season. It's one day at a time. Put your blinders on and go. And you need to have guys who understand that and, and work through that. You know, don't run around with their heads cut off. The league wants to – rewrite the history books every day. And that's just the nature of what the NFL has become. It's made everyone richer. Great. It's fantastic. But it's a lot of distraction and BS at the same time. What's important is the football. And you got to have guys who understand that. And that's our approach with the Bengals. It's my approach definitely in the O-line room. And we're looking for guys who fit in that. Last year, we, when we talked to you, you were looking at free agents. And that's when the glass eaters right. uh, line came up and became a thing. Is, right. uh, is that what you're doing now? Are you watching, watching free agents? See yeah, any we, glass we, eaters? Yeah, free agents and draft. We got to watch all the guys and be prepared. Like I said, it's who knows what the off seasons how it's going to unfold. And you know, we've got a lot of guys on our own team. We're trying to sign back at multiple positions, and we're always looking to stack and rank guys. If this guy comes available at this price, is where where does he fit in? If we have this much allotted to maybe go get this guy, is it something we'd be interested in or no? You know, so you're constantly. That's just the time of year we're watching a ton of film, college and pro, and you know, getting a a good feel for guys to give an opinion on when that time comes. Just out of curiosity, when you like went out and about in town like last year, did people like just randomly start talking about glass eaters? Is that did, did people has have just random folks come up and talk to you about that at all? Or no? uh, maybe on a couple of occasions. I don't know a ton, but <laughs> Brian was talking about Jackson and, and how yeah. rough the start to his career was and then how he really matured last right. year. Right. Was there a moment? practice, a meeting, a phone call, or where you really kind of saw that light go on and it saw a change in him? Uh, no, I mean, I'd say maybe it's, it was just more gradual, just, you know, he, uh, he he's always worked hard. I think just guys come into the league and they, ha they kind of have this outside view of what it's all about, you know, how the the outside world's built it up to be this, and it's really not that. Like it's got to, it's all about ball, and this is your approach, this is what your profession is, this is what you're, what you got to be all about day in and day out. And uh, you know, I think he kind of learned through the course of his his, his first couple of years what that's all about. And uh, I'm really proud of him. He did a great job, and he kept his mind or his head down, and, and just worked and kept his his focus on on what he needed to be doing. And he did a great job, and and it showed up on the last two games when he had to start for us. Did a nice job.